Yeah, this is Billiam. Let's talk about dinosaurs. You know, these dudes, they lived on the planet like 65 million years ago. They're all dead, unfortunately. But you know, I think we've all collectively thought, what if somehow dinosaurs survived? Wouldn't that be kind of neat? From works like The Lost World by Arthur Conan Doyle and the Super Mario Brothers movie, plenty of popular fiction has pondered the question, what if dinosaurs somehow survived? A few weeks ago, while blindly browsing the word dinosaur on Amazon.com as I do every Wednesday morning and every other morning, I came across this, Dinotopia. It's a three episode series about an island of dinosaurs and people living together in harmony and it's produced by Hallmark. Well, if you want to win, you're gonna have to learn how to smash. Well, I will learn how to smash. Dinotopia the miniseries is based on Dinotopia the books, a series written and illustrated by paleo and archaeological artist James Gurney. The core books are presented as research notes of an explorer, Arthur Dennison, who washes ashore the mysterious island of Dinotopia with his son, Will. In Dinotopia, intelligent dinosaurs live alongside humans who have descended from those who've shipwrecked on the island. With an imaginative world with its own language, culture, and traditions complemented by the gorgeous art, Dinotopia is pretty cool. In 2002, Disney picked up the rights to Dinotopia and produced an $88 million three hour and a half episode miniseries, which aired on ABC, but was produced by Hallmark. ABC and Hallmark Entertainment proudly present I mean, yeah, this doesn't look great now, but it's definitely impressive for TV at the time. The dinosaurs all look really cool. They were actually worked on by Jim Henson's Creature Shop and the same team who created the dinosaurs for Walking with Dinosaurs. Hallmark is known for their typical Christian-coded, cheesy rom-coms, and let me tell you, they really didn't learn to make anything else for Dinotopia. I mean, there are dinosaurs, unlike most Hallmark movies, unfortunately, but there's also this weird sexual tension in the the air always and with everyone I creamed you oh, look, I don't mind but if I could just for a moment I would like to thank today's sponsor Skillshare thank you Skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people, including topics like illustration, video, freelancing, and more. If you're wanting to jump into YouTube video creation this year or sometime soon, Skillshare has a great class by Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray, all about iPhone filmmaking, which can help you get great quality footage out of equipment you may already own. A lot of times when people are starting out, they tend to focus a lot on what equipment they're using, but you can get great quality stuff out of stuff you may already have access to and that's the way you're supposed to start and that's the best way to start. With Skillshare Premium you get access to Skillshare's entire library which has thousands of inspiring classes and with an annual subscription it's less than $10 a month and the first thousand of you to click the link in the description will get a free trial membership of Skillshare Premium which gives you access to their entire library so you can explore your creativity. So go check it out and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So the mini series is based on the first two books, but the main characters aren't the Denisons. Instead, they're these two, David and Carl. The Denisons were explorers and intellects. This is, you know, some dudes, stepbrothers even. David and Carl are going on vacation with their dad via their private plane. Dang, y'all can afford a private plane, but David's wearing a fit that dry? Well, he's gonna be wet now because their plane just crashed. Their father is presumed dead, but damn, even with all that ocean, David's drip is as dry as a piece of chalk. They meet a local merchant, Cyrus Crab, who they trust, not because he's going around blowing things up with dynamite, but because they're so dumb to see the immediate threat in front of them. You're the first archeologist I've met who uses dynamite. He brings them to this local village where this ankylosaur is running amok. It can't be, it's a dinosaur. David and Carl take the whole living dinosaur thing pretty okay. Dinosaurs died off millions of years ago. <laughs> if only, my boy, if only. Enter Princess Marion. Well, actually, she's the mayor's daughter, but she has some powers or something. She puts her hand on the dinosaur's head, and it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, my tooth hurts. She rips it out. Damn, she's a mayor's daughter and a dino dentist. You were pretty impressive yesterday dealing with that whatever it was. Ankylosaurus. Weren't you scared? 
I'm training to be a leader. Wanting to get home, they follow Marion back to Waterfall City, the capital of Dinotopia, in hope of getting help. They run into some T-Rexes, but get rescued by the Skybacks, a group of cool guys riding their cool pterodons. Follow the rules, they say. So they're not as cool as No Rules Pterodactyl from No Rules Pterodactyl Island. They get taken to Waterfall City, where they meet Zippo, a Trudon who speaks English. Dang, this looks familiar, and that's no accident. One of the early attempts to adapt Dinotopia was in the mid-90s and George Lucas was involved. They even got to a level of visual development, which had some people raising eyebrows when Naboo's design and the Phantom Menace look so similar to Waterfall City in Dinotopia, but James Gurney sees it as a homage rather than George Lucas stealing. But I don't. Most dinosaurs speak dinosaur, but never bother learning any human languages. <laughs> but Zippo is a nerd, so he speaks English. Uh, no, 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 it's perfectly all right. It, it was completely my fault. This dinosaur can talk. Zippo lets the boys stay in his home. They meet the mayor. Everyone is so welcoming and so kind, but that doesn't stop Carl from being a huge jerk. Carl's like, I want to go home. And they're like, you literally can't. The island's surrounded by like a bunch of huge rocks. I don't care what your science says. No, like you will die. Why is everyone so mean to me? The boys are told they need help assimilating into Dinotopia culture and they have to go to dino school, which is weird. Yeah, I have to go to the bathroom. Do I need a pass? No, but tonight's homework will be on the codes. Homework? Forget it. The assimilation into the culture is a little sudden and extreme, and David is very chill about the it. The care and teaching of humans. You don't find that sick. But their disagreements, which fuel a lot of the drama in the plot, just kind of play out like this. I mean, what are we doing here? Well, Carl, I'm trying to study for graduation. Graduation? What are you talking about graduation? We don't belong here. We're not Dinotopians. You're getting brainwashed. Can't you see that? Look, I don't have time to argue with you, okay? Are you insane? I will now read to you all the codes of Dinotopia. He's resistant to just like anything they say. I love this. Two, survival of all or none. Four, give more take less. He's just like, oh, goddamn socialist propaganda. But then later in the series, Carl is shocked that Marion's mom won't feed him unless he does work. Do you intend to eat our food? Well, yeah, I, I guess. Then you'll help us make it. It's amazing how Mr. Private Jet's entitlement works here. Carl's perspective is just overshadowed by his awfulness. Everyone is so patient with him and his little temper tantrums. He's like, I don't want to go to school. Perhaps there's something else you'd like to do. Nothing. Come on. Uh, there must be something you'd like to do. I mean, it's not like they don't give him other options. Carl sets up this makeshift ping pong table in the library and plays ping pong with Zippo. Oh. Ugh. Why nothing? Zippo is really excited about it because Zippo is the coolest, but Carl is just relentlessly beating him. I can't read his attitude. I think he's getting some weird sense of superiority here. Don't worry, Zippo. You'll get there. So, oh, do you have a... Um... Human partner? Zippo tells the boys about dino human spiritual bonding like dinosaurs and humans find their special partner on Dinotopia. One's a human, one's a dinosaur. So David thinks that's nice, but Carl just keeps fixating on dinosaur human relations. Doesn't that seem a little creepy? I mean, we're talking about lizards here. He's getting ideas. There's no way I'm gonna ever be walking around with a lizard girlfriend. Gross man, why would I be interested in those little arms, big mouth, or sexy tail spike, oh? I mean, there definitely was or is definitely some kind of dinosaur relations going on here at some point in Dinotopia's history. The legend says he was half man, half dinosaur. That means at some point, somebody has curiously, and dare I say bravely, crossed the thresholds of extinction to clap some dinosaur cheeks. I wouldn't put too much thought into it but Carl certainly does. Carl, that is unnecessary destruction of public property. 
And that is not how stegosauruses reproduce. I love how she's like, he's still pretty hot though. Meanwhile, Carl's trying to figure out if he's a triceratop or a triceratop. Then David does the unthinkable. He's like, Marion, what if we, I, I don't know, what if we as like two humans got together? And she's like, David, that's disgusting. We're both mammals. David tries his shot and she kind of shuts him down, but she sort of drags both of them along, even though she definitely likes Carl more. She's like, Carl, you're pretty cute, but one wrong move, one little dino toe out of line, and I'm gonna f your brother. I'm not kidding. I'll f him. I'll do it. Just test me, David. There's many things you can learn from a Brachiosaurus. Oh yeah? Like what? Like humility. What does that even mean? I just love this scene. Humility. I love his reaction. Absolutely no idea what that's supposed to mean, but he knows it wasn't good. Humility. Oh, Brachiosaurus, that's a wonderful painting. Oh, it's not that great. Cyrus says he needs a book from the library to help Carl and get him off the island. Despite the fact that Cyrus has been trying to get off the island his whole life as well, unsuccessfully. Why don't you call on me at the shop sometime? Whenever you get tired of the scale is trying to change you. Oh, great. Cyrus taught Carl a dino slur. Carl decides to trust Cyrus and steal the book from the library instead of borrowing it like a library would allow. And hey, Zippo works there. Why would you betray Zippo and trust Cyrus? Look, Zippo, books get stolen from libraries all the time. Not in Dinotopia, it's inconceivable to steal knowledge that should be for all. Carl decides to trust Cyrus, not because he taught him a slur that his good friend Zippo finds offensive, Scalies. or because Cyrus has access to explosives, but because Cyrus is British, and Carl thinks that gives him the right to other people's cultural artifacts. The tension between David and Carl amounts to a fight, which leads them tumbling over the waterfall, where they discover an ancient temple which holds many of the secrets of Dinotopian civilization. They explore the temple, which they think may hold sunstones, but it's remained undiscovered due to it being the sacred territory of the carnivores. The carnivores are these prehistoric gators. Uh, they let Zippo fall in the water because they're really bad friends, but then Carl goes in to save him because I, I guess he decides he likes Zippo. Zippo. All right, I guess we gotta, you know, we gotta give Carl credit here. He won't, he won't shut up about it unless we acknowledge what he did. Good, good job, Carl. I, I guess you still have time for a character redemption arc here. They come back to this dock area like literally once per episode. I guess you have to reuse the sets. So they go back to Waterfall City and the two write their final reports before graduation and Carl gets the top prize because he wrote a is poem. Is this the real life or is it a fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies, and see. I wanna die. After graduation, they go to the village where Marion's mom leads. Matriarch? And what's that mean? Well, in your world, well, I suppose it means she's in charge. He does not like the answer. I can never read anyone. There's no urgency in anyone's performance except for maybe Zippo's, but Zippo is animated. You're under arrest. You'll be escorted by guard, face trial at Waterfall City. I can't believe this. I mean, Carl is mean, but David and Marion are just so stiff. David can be snide sometimes. Carl has a little problem with authority. He's been kicked out of 11 schools. David, I wasn't speaking to you. Yeah, tell him. <laughs> Carl makes his move. He breaks into the girls' dormitory and he and Marion go swimming at night. But then later, Marion and David get some time alone in a pterodon nest. Absolutely nothing happens. But later, Carl asks Marion what happened. He's jealous. She's like, hey, you're, you're being kind of jerk. Maybe something did happen. I don't know, maybe something will happen. Try asking again. I said, Fuck around and find out. Meanwhile, Cyrus tells Zippo he thinks he found an entrance to an underwater cave, which may hold extra sunstones, the main power supply in Dinotopia, but he needs some library documents. Zippo catches on that he's the one who stole the book. So Cyrus stuffs them in a bag and throws them into the river. Zippo gets rescued, but holy heck, this Cyrus guy is pretty bad. No way we should trust him anymore. So Carl, David, and Marion get assigned Dinotopian society roles. David trains to become a Skybax rider and Carl gets assigned a parental-like guardianship role. Marion goes to research pterodons in the valley. Carl wants to leave Dinotopia. He's on the boat. He's trying to get away, but the baby dinosaur runs into the water after Carl. Go away! Yeah, 
The guy with the human superiority complex gave his dinosaur a number instead of a name. We're human beings, and that means we're at the top of the food chain. But their reuniting is... Well, I didn't like seeing the dinosaur almost drown, uh, but, you know, I guess Carl's done two good things now. Uh, so if we keep this up, maybe we'll be on track for a character redemption arc by the end of the series. David gets over his fear of heights and rides a cool pterodon, but Marion finds out bad pterodons are around in the Sunstone. Dinotopia's source of energy is dying. So they find out the cave they found, maybe the remnants of an underground world where the dinosaurs survived the meteor, and it could have Sunstone in it. Previously, Cyrus gave Carl a flare gun, which he took because he doesn't see why we shouldn't give this Cyrus guy another chance. What have the scalies ever done for you, eh? I'll tell you, nothing. Carl uses the flare, which awakes the herd, the no rules pterodons. Dang, they're not cool at all. The no rules pterodactyls, they just want to vibe and hang out and talk about other times they vibe together. But the pterodons, <laughs> They want to hurt people. The sunstones are gone. That's what keeps away the bad dinosaurs. Nobody believes the pterodons are a threat, but after ignoring the warning signs of Cyrus's violent tendencies and racist rhetoric and info that the pterodons want to hurt Dinotopia from Marion, the pterodons come to raid the capital of Dinotopia. Cyrus wants to team up and take them to the underwater entrance of the underworld because he thinks there may be more sunstones there. Hmm. The gang decides to trust Cyrus, not because he grabbed Zippo, stuffed them in a bag and threw him in a river in hopes he would drown and die or because, you know, he has deceived and dare I say tricked them multiple times already or because he just dropped the Essler in front of darling old Zippo here. Damn scale is old. No offense, Professor. But because David, Marion, and Carl are all willing to overlook that fact for the sake of unity. Can one of you f***ing stick up for your very good friend Zippo who would literally die for any of you? Not a single one of these characters deserves Zippo. Zippo, come on, what are you doing? This is where he threw me in the canal. Stop me in a sack. This is making me feel very anxious. Don't be such a baby. Carl, what the actual heck is your problem? Like, Jesus Christ, you are too close to the end of the miniseries. Your character arc is almost over. You cannot redeem yourself at this point. Cyrus takes them to the underworld via submarine, and Cyrus betrays them. What? After being given the opportunity to do the right thing over and over again and failing to do so and threatening to hurt and even harming the citizens of Dinotopia without any repercussions, he's decided to do it again? Huh? I'm flabbergasted. But then Cyrus is ambushed by their dad, who's been alive here in isolation for about two years. He's back, he's got a big beard, and he's f***ing traumatized. <laughs> Me? Us, actually. The needle can't come fast enough. The needle has had more delays than Cyberpunk 2077. I am just full of topical humor today. Cyrus escapes the underwater cave in the sub, but gets eaten by a sea dinosaur, meaning that that sea dinosaur is cool. The boys and the dad have to swim up through the stream with the newfound sunstones, and they cross the dock with all the prehistoric gators for the 17th time in the series. Then, Marion needs to go to the top of the tower to replace the old sunstone with the new one, but she faints right before she does it because she sucks so much. And then Zippo comes in and gets the job done at the last second because he's the only one who knows what's up. The pterodons explode. I mean, they leave. They go away. Marion says, this bullsh**. I love you, puss. Dad's starting to come back to us and Zippo. Well, Zippo's just happy to be with his good friends, David, Carl, and Marion, who will always have his back. Scalies. There was actually a sequel TV series for Dinotopia and an animated movie. So if you want to see me cover more Dinotopia stuff, do everything you have to do to appease the tube. Like this video, comment, share it, all of it. Also, you can follow me on social media down below. I'm just gonna dino plug that right now. Hallmark knows how to make one kind of movie, sappy, cheesy, soft-focused, Christian-coded romance movies. It's their bread and butter. You can't fault them for that. I like to watch stuff like that sometimes, but it really doesn't work here in Dinotopia. 
I mean, David, Carl, and Marion are all so unlikable, and it always feels like the sexual tension is a car hanging off the edge of a cliff, ready to fall off at any second, which begs the question, can dinosaurs be sexy? Well, somebody at Hallmark thought so. So anyways, I'm tired. I'm stressed. I'm gonna go get some sleep. 